In the 1960s, a small, unique and capable ground attack aircraft was designed by British Aircraft Corporation. This aircraft, the BAC-167 Strikemaster, would go on to serve with a number of countries across the world. What we have here is a BAC Strike Master aircraft. It's a, uh, as it says in its name, a strike aircraft. This particular aircraft is our only flying jet at the moment, and that's the reason it's in the collection. It represents, um, again, a 70s, 80s design, um, extensively flown all over the world. We're very proud to have it as a flying jet, and it'll stay with the collection um, probably for another 12 to 18 months. So. Again, it's a visiting aircraft. The stay it has here is donated by the owner of the aircraft, and we hope it'll be with us for, as I said, up to 18 months. First flying in 1967, the Strike Master was developed from the BAC Jet Provost, a trainer aircraft from 1954, which itself was a jet-powered modernization of the Percival Provost P-56 trainer, created in 1950. The Strike Master retained much of the design of the Jet Provost, including its seating configuration, basic airframe, and so on, although it did feature several improvements, including a better engine and better Martin Baker ejection seats, among other things. The Strike Master featured eight hard points on the wings, which could be outfitted with a variety of modifications, including rocket pods, napalm, bombs, and drop tanks. In the fuselage, the aircraft carried two 303 machine guns, carrying upwards of 500 rounds each. Despite its small size, the Strike Master could be loaded with up to 3,000 pounds of ordnance. It would often carry four 500 pound Mark 82 bombs at once, alongside full fuel load and both machine guns loaded to the max. Quite impressive given just how small the aircraft is, it was marketed as both a strike aircraft and a trainer. Of the 146 aircraft produced, the majority ordered by other nations was for use as an advanced jet trainer. This is likely because it was both similar to conventional jet trainers, such as the Mackie, whilst also having a unique seating configuration and a diverse array of possible armament. Many nations used it as a trainer, including New Zealand, Singapore, Botswana, Kenya, Saudi Arabia and others. However, several aircraft would be used in wartime, as the designers intended. Yemen, Oman and Ecuador would all use the aircraft in combat. Ecuador would deploy the aircraft in 1995. Here, it was tasked with ground attack missions and saw moderate use. Before this, it had been used by Oman during the Dofar Rebellion. Its primary role was, as expected, strike missions on enemy positions. However, later in the war, it was used in a close air support role, watching over troops. South Yemen would also use the aircraft in combat, once again taking part in light ground attack missions. The aircraft was a good match for use in third world countries, thanks to its small size and robust design. It was well suited for rough terrain. Strong, short landing gear and tough tires allowed it to operate from short or poorly paved runways. Its ejection system was optimized for low altitude bailouts, which was attractive given the likelihood of it partaking in low altitude strike missions. Although the aircraft had some flaws, it gained a reputation for its operability in harsh environments. The Strike Master had a long career, serving countries into the 1990s. However, several flying aircraft still exist, including this one. In fact, one is still in the possession of the Ecuadorian Air Force and continues to fly. <laughs>